Eastbound drivers at the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel will begin traveling over a new bridge this weekend. It's part of the HRBT expansion project. They say the best place to hide a secret is right out in the open. Off the coast of Virginia, giant artificial islands are rising from the water. It looks like standard infrastructure work, but dig a little deeper into the paperwork and you find gaps. The project is still behind schedule. VDOT blames unforeseen cost and an equipment problem. We know they are removing the sand. We know they are processing it. But where is it all going? That is the billion dollar question. Because if the rumors are true, the mud in those barges contains the exact ingredients needed to win the next global technology war. Digging into the unknown. The ocean floor is supposed to be quiet. It is a place of darkness, pressure, and silence. But right now, beneath the waves of Hampton Roads, Virginia, that silence is being shattered by a mechanical violence that is hard to wrap your head around. We are talking about a machine that defies logic. They named her Mary. It sounds innocent enough, but do not let the name fool you. This is a subterranean monster built for one purpose, to chew through the earth without mercy. To understand the scale of what is happening down there, you have to forget everything you know about normal construction. This is not a bulldozer pushing dirt around. Mary is 450 feet long. That is longer than a football field. She stands as tall as a four-story building. And get this, she weighs over 10 million pounds. To put that in perspective, that is heavier than seven fully loaded Airbus A380 jets stacked on top of each other. She was built in Germany by a company called Herrenknecht, the absolute kings of tunnel boring. It took them 14 months just to build her. Then they had to take her apart, ship her across the Atlantic Ocean in pieces, and spend another four months putting her back together like the world's most complicated puzzle. This single machine costs $70 million. That is the price of two luxury super yachts just to dig a hole. But here is the catch. Mary is not just digging a hole, she is fighting the ocean itself. The ground beneath Hampton Roads is not solid rock. It is a treacherous mix of soft silt, sand, and clay. If you dig through that without the right tech, the ocean floor collapses and the water comes rushing in. It would be a catastrophe. So, Mary has to be smart. As her massive cutter head spins, generating 27 million pounds of torque, she is also building the tunnel behind her in real time. She injects high-pressure mud to hold the walls up, creating a protective skin. Then, robotic arms place massive concrete rings, each weighing thousands of pounds, to seal the tunnel. It is a factory on wheels, moving inches at a time under crushing pressure. And that brings us to the sheer amount of earth being moved. This machine is displacing millions of cubic yards of seabed. We are talking about enough sand and sediment to fill a line of dump trucks stretching from Virginia to California. And this is where the story starts to get interesting. Because when you move that much earth, you are bound to find things. The official story is that this is all waste material, just mud and muck that needs to be hauled away so the cars can drive through but geologists have known for a long time that the Virginia coastal plain is not just mud. It is a geological vault. The sediments here have washed down from the Appalachian Mountains over millions of years. They are rich in heavy minerals. So as Mary grinds her way forward, churning up the history of the continent, she is also bringing something else to the surface. It creates a situation that has some experts watching very closely. You have a massive government-funded project digging up exactly the kind of material that the tech world is desperate for. And most people are just happy that their morning commute might get five minutes faster. The scale of the excavation is hiding the details of the extraction. It is the perfect cover. You have barges moving day and night. You have processing centers sifting through the spoil. And you have a public that is looking at the bridge, not at the dirt. But what if the dirt is actually the most valuable part of the whole operation? The machine is just the beginning. To make this tunnel work, they didn't just have to dig under the water. They had to change the geography of the coastline itself. What they built next changes the map forever. The artificial ground. If building a tunnel under the ocean sounds hard, try building the land you need to start it. You cannot just park a 10 million pound machine on the water and tell it to start digging. You need solid ground. And since nature didn't put an island where they needed one, the engineers decided to build their own. 
This is the part of the project that really shows you the ambition we are dealing with. They are expanding two artificial islands right in the middle of the bay. These are not small patches of dirt. We are talking about expanding the North Island and the South Island to support the massive infrastructure of the new tunnel system. To do this, they had to bring in nearly 1.6 million cubic yards of fill material. That is enough sand and rock to fill nearly 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools. They dumped it into the ocean layer by layer, compacting it until it was strong enough to hold skyscrapers, cranes, and the entry points for the highway. The South Island is the heart of the operation. It was originally built back in the 50s, but it was too small for modern needs. So they doubled its size. Now it is a floating city. It has its own electrical substations, concrete plants, and housing for 200 workers who live out there suspended between the sky and the sea. At night, it lights up like a stadium, buzzing with activity while the rest of the world sleeps. But here is the deal. Building an island is not just about dumping rocks. You have to dredge the surrounding area to clear the path for ships and to settle the foundation. Dredging is a nice word for ripping up the seafloor. Giant scoops and suction pipes pull up everything that is settled on the bottom for centuries. This is where the volume of sand gets truly staggering. They are not just moving dirt, they are processing it. Every single barge load of dredged material has to be tested. They say it is for environmental safety, to make sure they aren't spreading pollution. And that is true, but that testing process also reveals exactly what is in the sand. When you process millions of tons of sediment, you are effectively running a massive mining sifter. You separate the water, the silt, the clay, and the heavy sands. In a normal construction project, you would just use the sand to build the island and throw the rest away. But in today's economy, throwing it away is losing money. We know that sand is the second most consumed resource on Earth after water. It sounds crazy, right? Sand? But we use 50 billion tons of it a year. We use it for glass, for concrete, for silicon chips. The world is actually running out of the good stuff. Desert sand is too smooth, it doesn't stick together. You need river sand or marine sand, the jagged rough grains that lock together. So here we have the state of Virginia sitting on a gold mine of marine sand, dredging it up by the boatload, and they are using a lot of it to build these islands. But there is always leftover material. There is always the spoil. And this is where the paper trail gets a little foggy. The official reports talk about placement areas and beneficial use. That usually means using the sand to fix eroding beaches or restore wetlands. And they are doing that. But the sheer quantity of material coming out of the bay is immense. It raises a flag for anyone who knows the history of this region. The rivers that feed into this bay, the James, the Rappahannock, they flow through mineral-rich veins. As they dump into the ocean, they carry tiny fragments of heavy metals. Over thousands of years, those heavy metals settle in the deep channels. The exact same channels they are dredging right now. So you have the perfect storm, a global shortage of industrial sand, a massive project funded by the government, and a geological location known for heavy minerals. It starts to look less like a road project and more like a strategic harvest. But the real treasure is much smaller than sand. Cracking the code. Now we get to the part that has the experts whispering. It is not about the sand itself, it is about what is hiding inside the sand. You see, not all sand is created equal. Most of it is just silica, basically crushed quartz. It is useful, sure, but mixed in with that silica, especially in the coastal plains of Virginia and the Carolinas, is something called heavy mineral sands. These dark, dense grains contain minerals like ilmenite, zircon, and, this is the big one, monazite. Why does monazite matter? Because monazite is one of the primary sources of rare earth elements. Let's break that down. Rare earth elements are the vitamins of modern industry. We are talking about neodymium, dysprosium, praseodymium. You might not know how to pronounce them, but you use them every single day. They are in the magnets that make your electric car motor spin. They are in the speakers of your iPhone. They are in the guidance systems of missiles and the turbines of wind farms. Without these elements, the modern world stops. No more high-tech fighter jets, no more green energy revolution. And here is the kicker. China controls most of the world's supply. They mine it, they refine it, and they sell it to us. 
If they decided to turn off the tap tomorrow, the U.S. economy would hit a brick wall. So, the United States has been frantically looking for domestic sources. They are desperate to find rare earths on American soil. And guess where geologists have found promising signs? The Fall Line of Virginia The Fall Line is where the hard bedrock of the mountains meets the soft sediment of the coast. For millions of years, rivers have eroded the mountains and washed these heavy, valuable minerals down toward the ocean. They settle in the riverbeds and the bays, right where Mary is digging. Some researchers from Virginia Tech and independent geologists have pointed out that the sediments in this region are consistent with monazite-bearing sands. It is not a guarantee, but the geology matches. Now put yourself in the shoes of the planners. You have to dig this tunnel anyway. You have to move millions of tons of this specific sediment. If you knew there was a chance it contained millions of dollars worth of strategic minerals, wouldn't you check? And get this, the companies involved in this project are global giants. They have divisions that do mining, energy, and infrastructure. They know exactly what they are looking at. If they pull up a load of dredging spoil and their sensors pick up a high concentration of heavy minerals, they are not just going to dump it in a swamp. The separation process for these minerals is heavy industrial work. It looks a lot like the washing and processing they do for standard construction sand. You run it through spirals and shakers to separate the heavy grains from the light ones. To an outsider, it just looks like they are cleaning the dirt, but they could easily be concentrating the ore. This is the theory that won't go away, that the Hampton Roads expansion is a two birds with one stone scenario. They get the tunnel, which they need, but they also get access to a massive deposit of critical minerals without having to open a new mine. Opening a new mine takes decades of permits and protests. But dredging for a tunnel? That is already approved. It is the ultimate loophole. You are not mining. You are maintaining infrastructure. You are not extracting resources. You are managing spoil. The implications of this go way beyond Virginia. What most people don't realize is that we are in the middle of a silent war. It is not being fought with bullets, but with supply chains. And the battlefield is the bottom of the periodic table. For the last 20 years, the West has been asleep at the wheel while Asia cornered the market on critical minerals. We exported the dirty work of mining because we didn't want the pollution. But now we realize that gave away the keys to the kingdom. The U.S. government has designated rare earths as a matter of national security. The Pentagon is throwing money at anyone who can secure a domestic supply. They are looking at old coal mines, they are looking at recycling, and yes, they are looking at coastal sands. What do you think? Is this just a tunnel or is it the smartest mining operation in history? Let me know in the comments below. If you learned something new today, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the stories they don't tell you on the news. See you in the next one.